Hello folks, thanks for joining the call today and we trust that the few minutes that you spend with us will be a blessing to you. I'm going to read to you just one verse from the Bible and it's from Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1 and it says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Now it's obvious that that is a verse that's particularly applicable for younger people but I just want to remind you there's not one of you viewing today who will ever be any younger than you are at this moment. So it's applicable to all. Remember now thy creator. Now this is a time of year when in our land we remember the fallen of two world wars. It's coinciding with Armistice Day and we reflect and we remember those who willingly lost their lives in the interest of our nation. There are very few people left in the world who have any recollections of the First World War and its aftermath, but there are many more who remember the Second World War and its aftermath. And the likes of myself, I don't remember the war itself, but I do hear I did hear the tales that were brought back by uncles and so on of their exploits in the three armed forces, the Navy, the Air Force and the Army. But they came back and we're thinking of people who did not come back and their lives were given. Their lives were given in order to preserve peace for our nation, liberty for our nation. And as a boy growing up in the late 40s and early 50s, I can tell you, I would have been glad of that liberty. These were carefree days. You know, we had our swing parks and we had our football pitches and we could go back and forward to the school without any anxieties. We didn't have to worry about the stern, cruel, hard faces of an occupying army. We didn't have to be concerned about uh, rifles and bayonets. We didn't have to be anxious about listening for the tramp of the jackboots of the Nazis as they patrolled. No, the war was won and we're thankful for those who gave all to provide that liberty. We thank God too for a Prime Minister like Mr Churchill who was resolute and even in the face of opposition from cabinet, cabinet colleagues who were sympathising with his former Prime Minister, the appeaser Chamberlain, he was resolute and he carried the thing through. And we thank God for the expertise of men like Montgomery. But especially, we thank God for a king whose trust was in the living God. And when eventually it came to VE Day, he said, we give thanks to Almighty God for the victory that he has given us in Europe. And my dear friends, he attributed victory to the proper source. God was in control and God moved in our interests. Time has moved on. I was 10 years old when the Prime Minister of that day, Mr Macmillan, said the most of our people have never had it so good and materialism gripped the nation. Moving into the 60s, promiscuity became the order of the day and it has blossomed. It is full grown by the time we've arrived at 2020. And I do fear, my friend, that what God said about the people of Israel centuries ago could be said of our nation today. My people have forgotten me days without number. God has been marginalised. And what the Bible predicted has come through true for our generation. Men have become lovers of pleasures instead of lovers of God. There was a man called Eric Liddell and we call him the Flying Scotsman and he did have an interest in sport but out of respect for God he did not run his heat for the hundred metres in the Paris Olympics on the Lord's Day and yet he won a medal in another event. God ordered, honoured him. But you know, these men are few and far between today. Where are the men like George Wishart and Patrick Hamilton in Scotland who gave their lives at the stake in St Andrews because of their loyalty to God? Where are the men like John Knox who was willingly calling the people to repentance? Now, I can't call the nation to repentance. I'm just sitting here making this little video in my own room and I have no platform upon which I can call upon the nation to repentance. But you're in my congregation today and I want to encourage you to think about God. 
And even although, by and large, God's people have forgotten him days without number, this verse is saying to us, what about it now? Remember, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator. I hope you do believe that we're part of a creation and it was God who triggered this great creation just by his spoken word. He brought it all into being because he is what we call omnipotent, all powerful. And he spoke and it was done, the Bible says. The amazing thing is this, friends, the Bible never goes about to prove the existence of God. It always just makes the assumption that God is there. And the Bible starts with these words, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And you know, although God doesn't speak, the Bible makes it clear to us that it's just as if the heavens are a voice to us and the earth all around us, creation, it's God's voice to us, day unto day utter speech. And through creation, God is saying, look, I'm here. I do exist. And I'm just wondering if you're willing to take into account that you have a creator, a creator to whom you are accountable. The Bible describes him as the God with whom we have to do. So as we do remember with gratitude, People who did so much for us in a past generation, I hope you remember God too, your creator. In fact, the Lord Jesus encouraged people to remember him. Maybe you remember that just before he went to the cross at Calvary, he took a loaf of bread and a cup of wine. And he made it clear that this would become a symbol. The loaf would be a symbol of his body that was given on the cross. And the cup of wine would be a symbol of the precious blood that he would shed. And he said, remember me. In using these symbols, he was saying, you'll be remembering me. Are you willing today to remember Christ literally in the fact that his body was given on the cross for your sins? You know what the Bible says? He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. The tree is just a term that the Bible uses to describe the cross on which he died, but he bore our sins, the lies we've told, the times we've flown off the handle, the jealousies and the hatred that we've harboured in our hearts, at the lies, the, the blasphemy, the fact that we've marginalised God and we haven't made him supreme in our lives when the Bible says you really should be loving him with all your heart and your soul and your strength and your might, our sins. And friend, as you view today, I want you to remember that the Lord Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree. He took the penalty that we deserved. You know, our sins really required us being banished from the presence of God forever. But God had no desire for that to, be, to, to happen. And so the Lord Jesus was sent. And he came into this world at what we call the incarnation. God was manifest in the flesh. And in that body, he bore our sins on the cross. And then, of course, there was his blood that was shed. And the shedding of his blood was the price that was paid to effect our liberation. We've been thinking of the fact that our nation was liberated from a potential tyranny. My friends, Christ is able to liberate us from the power of evil. He paid the price to redeem us. But of course, you've got to be willing to remember him, and not just remember him, to remember that if he died for sinners, then he died for you. And really... To come to the point in life of realising that your hope of the forgiveness of sins and the salvation of your soul and peace with God, it all hinges on the fact that his body was given and his blood was shed. Are you willing to come to Christ today and believe in him and really depend on what he did for you when he died upon the cross? I've mentioned already that God is the God to whom we're accountable. And maybe you think that right through life, God has been doing a kind of assessment of your life and he's awarding you points here and points there for good things that you've done. And maybe like some of the youngsters at school, you've maybe felt that your life has been in modules and there was the, the time when you were being educated at school and you're wondering how many points 
you earn in that phase and, uh, and maybe you were a student or an apprentice and you won how many points did I uh, earn at that particular stage and, and so it goes, my dear friends, God doesn't work like that at all. And it's so good, so important to understand that God, out of love for you, has provided salvation freely without asking you to contribute. No, you're dependent on Jesus Christ. So we need to remember our Creator and we need to remember that His Son gave His body and shed His blood. But the Bible tells us too that we need to remember that the Lord Jesus rose from the dead. Remember that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Oh friends, he didn't just die. End of story. He was raised triumphantly and in power. And we ask you today to put your faith in that living Saviour. He loves you, you see. He, he's not only the good shepherd who died, but the Bible says he's the great shepherd who was brought from the dead. And that great shepherd wants to be your shepherd, your saviour, your friend. But you must be willing to admit him to your life. I wonder if you're willing to do that today. Memory. And we remember the fallen. And we salute their memory. But it's important to remember God, to remember your Creator. Just let me close by telling you this. The Bible makes clear that memory will be eternal. And the Lord Jesus one day of a man who spoke without, uh, who sorry, who died without ever having his sins forgiven. And that man was in hell, the Saviour said, in torment. But he did have memory there. He remembered the old homestead. He remembered his father. He remembered his five brothers. But he remembered too that he had come to understand that he had to repent of his sins. And he'd never done it. And now he was lost. Wouldn't it be a sad thing if ultimately you were to be lost and you remember this day in November 2020 when you viewed the video and you heard that you had to remember your Creator and yet you just ignored him and kept his son at arm's length and refused to repent and believe in him. Viewer, I beg of you earnestly as we draw our little talk to a close, you turn to the Saviour today and trust in him and all will be well with your soul.